So Clean Living Lifestyle Part 2. We're so glad that you were able to join us to talk about how to make some greener, cleaner, healthier choices. And we know that many of you who took our recent poll on Instagram indicated that you want to learn more about household products and cleaning products. And so we're going to talk about that as well as beauty products and even healthier food choices. My name is Abby Horton. I'm a registered nurse and I teach here at the University of Alabama Capstone College of Nursing. I'm a certified health and life coach, a Wellbama ambassador, and your wellness class educator. If you have questions or want to provide feedback or reach out to me for any reason, my email is here, abby.horton at ua.edu. And we would love to remind you of some upcoming events. We have a health screening next week at Russell Hall on June 29th. And you can sign up through your wellness portal on MyBama to be able to reserve a slot. And I will actually be there to help with the screenings with my students. So we would love to see you. If you do stop in, please say hello. We also have a Don't Wait Hydrate class coming up on July 13th. And we have many programs that we would love for you to partake in. We have this wellness.ua.edu backslash programs. And so if you want to click on this link when we share the presentation with you, you can go there to see all of our latest programs. So with that being said, I would love for you to put in the chat, I would type one in the chat if you have attended the Clean Living Lifestyle Part 1. If you're only attending Part 2, which is today's session, put a two. And if this is your first wellness class with me, if you will type a three. I just want to see who all is on the chat today. All right, so we have a couple of people here back from part one. Yes, and I love that y'all put twos and threes. Yes, if this is your first time and you are typing a, one, a two, that's great too. Please do put that in the chat. So we have a good mix of first timers and those who attended the first class and those who are just attending part two. So I would invite you if you haven't seen part one to go back and watch part one. I went more into the behind the scenes of Clean Living Lifestyle. Um, these are able to be standalone classes though. So for those who joined on part one, the first few slides are gonna be a recap just so that we can get everyone on the same page. So welcome, so glad to have you here. Um, for those that are just joining me, my name is Abby Horton, like I mentioned, and I've been teaching these classes since 2019, and it's been a highlight of my week ever since, so thankful to be able to join y'all. We're going to explore the clean living lifestyle, discuss the importance of clean living and the health impact that it has for you, and we're going to talk about specific strategies that you can adopt to live a cleaner lifestyle. We're also going to talk about more products today, which was really the overwhelming desire of those who participated in the first class. We want to see more products and we want to see um, cleaner choices and kind of give some more direction on those companies that are really doing a great job with clean and green products. So the disclaimer is that this is just for educational purposes. I want you to focus on what you can control because so much of what we're going to talk about may feel like it is new. It's information that maybe you haven't seen before. Uh, it can feel like there's a lot of things that you need to change, and I don't want y'all to feel overwhelmed with that. Take what resonates with you and leave the rest. Some of this may be, you know, further than you want to go on your journey toward a healthier, cleaner lifestyle right now, and that's okay. Um, I started this journey for myself personally and my family back in 2013, and so it's been almost 10 years that I've been working on cleaner, greener products, and I'm still learning and I'm still working on that. So you're never going to be the expert. You're never going to be at the finish line with this. So just remember to take baby steps. Small progress is still progress, and reach out if you have any questions. So here's a recap on what we talked about in the first class. Clean living lifestyle is truly a lifestyle and it focuses on intentional healthy choices in your diet, your lifestyle products and your cleaning products. You have to get your mindset right around this because the thing is, is you're always going to have healthier choices that you could make. And it's not about being perfect and it's not about being 100% with all of your products. It's about making intentional choices where you can and where it works for your life and your budget and your family. And it's about knowing um, what options you have in terms of picking better products for yourselves and your loved ones. 
you want to always educate yourself on clean living and understand that it's going to evolve. So when you make a cleaner, healthier choice in the shampoo that you use, um, it may be that you find out that there's an even better product later because technology is always changing. New companies are always cropping up. And so what works for you now may not work for you, um, you know, a year from now or five years from now. And that's OK. Read and research to start your journey, but make sure that you're not getting into this habit of consuming information and not actually implementing what you're learning. I know that sometimes what we do is we want to research, we want to pick the best product, and sometimes you just need to start with one product, just change out one habit, one product, one lifestyle component. Be kind to your brain and budget and start small. Ditch and switch one habit, one product at a time, like I mentioned. Give yourself grace during the process because there are going to be times where you know that you need to pick a healthier option and you can't for whatever reason or you choose not to, and that's okay. And then remember that this is a journey and the impact of toxins, that what you can do to really help your health the most is to just eliminate and avoid as many toxins as you can. And so I don't talk about chemical-free living because chemicals are in everything, right? Chemical compounds are in our water, it's in our furniture that we're sitting on, it's in our, you know, everyday life. And so you're not going to have a chemical free lifestyle, but you could have a less toxic, um, you know, environment and lifestyle. And so that's what our focus is on today. The Toxic Substances Control Act of 1976 is important to know because it was actually put into law here in the US and by the EPA, regulating new and existing chemicals. And so this is something I didn't mention in the first presentation, but wanted to point out here is that there's an estimated 65,000 to 100,000 chemicals on the market um, that were actually grandfathered in as uh, being safe because there were no known causes of you know, health problems or death when they did uh, the actual testing in the laboratories. And, and most of those, unfortunately, were animal tests. So toxic labeling, though, is only required if 50 to 90 percent of the animals that are used within this testing are actually harmed or die. And so that is important to know because you could have effects from chemicals that you're being exposed to without having a warning label indicating that it is toxic. And so it talks about the toxic acuity level of different chemicals. And so it's something that's really important to be aware of. You may be using a shampoo or you may be using um, some type of chemical product that doesn't have a warning label, but it may not be the best choice for your health. And we use a term called uh, GRAS, GRAS, is a term meaning generally regarded as safe. And so that's something to also keep in mind is that, you know, without evidence to support that there is a problem, it may just be considered generally regarded as safe and it still may not be the best choice for your health. So the thing that you want to really focus on and the focus of this presentation is reading your labels. And so oftentimes I would imagine when you're picking a product, if you're anything like me, if you're picking something that is a food product, you're probably just looking at the calories. You know, we are really conditioned and only taught to look for calories because we have had this calorie driven lifestyle for years and years. And on the products that you're using that you're not eating, you know, your skincare, your, your sun care, all of those kinds of things, your products, um, your hygiene, beauty products, you're probably just looking to see what it does and what fragrance you like, right? That's probably the sum total of what you're looking at. Now, if you're more advanced and you're more, you know, kind of, um, you know, I, I think, awareness minded around this kind of thing, you may be looking for more information, but generally, you know, most people are just going to be looking for those handful of things and then they're going to move on, right? They also are probably looking at the price because the price is really driving the products that we buy, especially in today's economy. And so reading your labels is going to be something that you want to do and taking it a step further than just looking at the price point, the, you know, the fragrance that you're preferring and, you know, calories and things like that. You're going to want to do a little bit of a deeper dive. And we're going to talk about that today. 
So some ingredients to avoid or limit. This is a new slide um, from the first PowerPoint presentation, but this is not an exhaustive list. So when you look at your labels, and I have a few examples later in the presentation, you wanna look for alcohols, aluminum, chlorines, conventional detergents and emulsifiers, which will be listed as detergent or an emulsifier, DEA or TEA, any type of fragrance or dye, especially synthetic, heavy metals, parabens, pesticides or fungicides, petrochemicals, synthetic preservatives, propylene glycocol, sodium lauryl sulfate, and talc. So that talc powder, I'm sure you've all seen the recalls on baby powder and it's because of the talc. So these are ingredients that you definitely want to look for and avoid when you can. There are about 80,000 chemicals currently used um, in the U.S. that haven't been adequately tested for their effects on human health. And so um, the 80,000 for the U.S. is in that 65 to 100,000 range that I mentioned earlier. So a general rule of thumb when you're looking at an ingredients list, because I'm going to tell you a lot of my favorite products today and some of my favorite companies, but you need to know how to read the labels yourselves to be able to decide is this a good product. And so we're going to share that information with you today. So five ingredients or less, especially when it comes to food, you wanna make sure that they don't have an entire, you know, back side of the product with just tons and tons of chemicals and ingredients. You wanna be able to pronounce most of the ingredients on the list or be able to recognize them. If you can't recognize them, your body probably can't either. And then you want to remember that the ingredients on any list, whether it's a food product or whether it's a beauty product, you know, household cleaner, whatever it is, the ingredients are listed in order by their largest quantity. So if the first thing that's on the list is sugar, then sugar is the biggest percentage um, or amount of that product. So you want to see the things that aren't easy to pronounce, the things that aren't as healthy, you want to see them either not be on the label or they want to be kind of toward the end of the list. So that's a general rule of thumb for ingredients. The never list, this is a list of ingredients that Beauty Counter, as I mentioned, uh, put out saying that we don't ever wanna see these products in our beauty, skincare, um, you know, products, household cleaners products, any of that kind of thing. Uh, because they are known to be uh, mutually carcinogenic for folks, um, so meaning that they have components that may cause cancer and um, things that are just generally not healthy. These are also things that have already been banned in Europe but are still okay to be used in the U.S. And so this is Beauty Counters Never List, and they are more than just a beauty company. They really are advocating in Washington, D.C. for safer, cleaner products for everyone and for all brands. Uh, 26 seconds is about how long it takes for anything that you put in or on your body to get into your bloodstream. And so I mentioned before that if you're putting something on your body, you want to make sure that it's something that you wouldn't mind eating or consuming, even though, of course, you're not going to eat your sunscreen. Um, but it's just a visual to remind you that you really are basically eating it because you're consuming it by putting it on your skin, which is our la largest body organ. And so anything that you put on your skin is going into your bloodstream as if you had ingested it. So what's in your products? That's what we want to focus on. The eight most toxic things in your home. This is a slide I included again because I think it's so powerful. You want your water bottles to be glass or a safe metal. You want to avoid plastic food containers. You want to avoid carpets in your home, not only for the chemicals, but also for the allergens. Pizza boxes, you know, are very, very toxic because of the chemicals that they use to uh, make those be um, heat safe and make them not melt and, and, and not kind of leak out. And so those are not great. Microwave popcorn because of the popcorn bags, the chemicals that are on the bags themselves. Hand sanitizer, sofas because of all of the chemicals and preservatives that are on them. And then strawberries because of their porous skin. So I included this slide again for all of those different uh, chemicals that you can see, things like flame retardants on your furniture, your sofa, fluoride in your toothpaste, which I mentioned is controversial, but most dentists agree that you can have too much fluoride. It's called fluorosis. 
um, and it can impact um, your brain and neurological health. Of course, there has been some correlation showing that it helps prevent cavities, but there are some other products I'm going to share with you today that are even better. Diesel fuel, when you're pumping your gas in your car, you want to make sure that you go back and sit in your car so that you're not inhaling those fumes. PBA or other chemicals, I call them chemical cousins. PBA has really been replaced by other chemicals, but they probably have very similar effects in terms of being endocrine disruptors, uh, which is going to impact your hormones and your thyroid gland and things like that. So try to avoid PPA, BPA and those chemical cousins. Lead paint, of course, this is going to be in older homes in, in the 1960s, maybe even the early 70s and later. Um, so you want to make sure that if you have any kind of renovations or reconstructions or things going on that you're not being exposed to lead paint. Lead paint also on children's toys. I'm going a little bit in a deeper dive on this slide than I did in the first presentation uh, because I really want to point out some examples. Lead paint, we think, oh, well, you know, I have a new home. I, my paint in my house is lead free. But are those toys that your kids are playing with, are those products that you're buying that are painted and they're not from the U.S., they are, you know, likely going to have some lead components to them if they're painted and they are not manufactured in the U.S. And so it's important to be aware of that, especially because children under age five tend to put a lot of things in their mouths, and that's going to be a huge source of um, toxic overload for those kids. So think about the toys and the other painted products that you get, not just your walls. That was something that I didn't think about initially because I thought, oh, well, my home's new that, you know, I'm good to go on that. And then someone brought it to my attention. What about those kids' toys that you're buying? Uh, mercury in any of your bottom feeding fish, you want to be concerned um, and just aware of the possibility of having mercury. Um, even things like arsenic and some fruits and vegetables and rice and things that you um, could be exposed to. That's one that's not on here, but it's something that you want to be aware of. Chemicals in your cigarette products and your nicotine products, your vapes and, and that kind of product you want to be aware of. Exhaust and pollution obviously can be a huge um, factor. Different chemicals in your alcohol. If you are drinking alcohol, especially if you're drinking multiple times a week, you want to make sure that you have a high grade alcohol and that you're not getting um, some of those chemicals that are not uh, you know, taken care of in that process in the cheaper brands. Uh, insect pesticide, I shared with y'all before that we don't have our the interior of our house sprayed for pests. We have just the outside because we do have young children and we don't want them exposed. Uh, I mentioned the flame retardants that can be on kids pajamas. So making sure that your kids pajamas are snug so that they don't have that flame retardant exposure. Dry cleaning, if you do use a dry cleaning product, or if you actually take your clothes to a dry cleaner, make sure that you take the bag off immediately so it doesn't trap those chemicals in there. It's a dry clean because it's a chemical clean. And so you want to make sure that you take off the plastic bag. Aluminums and parabens and any kind of aerosol spray can be a source of toxins. And then food pesticides and other chemicals. And then tin poisoning. So you don't want to drink any kind of drink um, even those fun LaCroix waters and things like that, you don't want to drink out of tin um, or that aluminum because you could be having that leach into your product. So I included the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen again because these are going to be the 15 cleaner foods that you can buy more conventionally uh, that aren't organic because they have a tougher skin. And then the dirty dozen are going to be things that have the softer skin. It's more likely that those could be penetrated with chemicals and it's harder to clean those. And so those are the dirty dozen that you want to make sure that you buy organic versions. And so this is all coming from the EWG or the Environmental Working Group, which is an app that I will share again today. So clean your food. This is the solution of water and vinegar and salt that I recommend. So the one cup of vinegar to four parts water and then enough Celtic sea salt to make the water cloudy. Clean all your fruits and vegetables, soak it, rinse it with water, and then you want to dry and store as you normally would in the fridge. And then reading the food labels. So from here on out, this is going to be new information. So reading the food labels is important and we look at things like serving size, fat and sodium, protein, individual needs. So average Diet is going to be based on a 2,000 calorie um, diet a day. 
your calories are here and then your carbohydrates, the nutrients in the feeds, and then the percentage of your daily values. You also want to look at the ingredient list to see what is actually in the food, like I mentioned, and the expiration date. And so oftentimes I have found, even as a nurse, we often just look directly at the calories and then we might look at the serving size. And then if it's in our price point and it's something that we are really excited to eat or to buy, then we just, we just add to cart or we buy it. And we don't think about some of the other important aspects of this label. And we certainly usually don't spend a lot of time looking at the ingredient list. And if we do, we may not know what we need to look for. So I included some screenshots from Instagram. It's called Wake Up and Read the Labels. That is the IG handle on Instagram for this account. And it talks about the different ingredients that you can see. So for Ritz crackers, the you know, biggest ingredient that you're going to see here is going to be the unbleached enriched flour. Okay. And so then in parentheses, it has that it's a wheat flour that has niacin, reduced iron, thiamine, riboflavin, and folic acid. Okay, so that is going to be all that's included in this enriched flour. So that's how you read the label. And the things that are highlighted in pink are the things that are concerning. The unbleached enriched flour, because unbleached flour uh, that's enriched can have synthetic vitamins in the ingredients that are hard to process, particularly for certain people with certain conditions. Um, you want to get Folate, folate is important. Folic acid is the synthetic version. Folate is going to be superior and easier for your body to convert. Canola oil and other seed oils can be very inflammatory. You've got whey, which comes from milk, and that can vary, you know, depending on your sensitivity, that can cause some inflammation. Sugar is pretty high on the ingredient list here. Then you've got pasteurized milk, corn, fructose, syrup, You've got um, soy, which can be a trigger for some people, and that's being used as an emulsifier. You've got modified lactic acid and artificial colors. You really want to try to avoid artificial colors, especially um, the red, because that can really be linked to ADHD type symptoms, especially in children and neurological conditions. And so there are other ways to get uh, you know, dyes that are more natural, things like using beets to color something versus having the red number five dye, that would be a good swap. There also are some other vegan and organic options in terms of a more traditional product that gives you a food colorant, but is not going to be as harmful. And then it tells you that it contains wheat, milk, and soy, and those are here because those can be allergens for people. And so if you notice that these are the same flours, oils, and sugars, and preservatives that you'll see over and over and over again as a concern. So some things that I would recommend are really diving deep into the types of ingredients that you typically consume and how you feel after you eat something. And so if you're waking up bloated, tired, if you're having muscle or joint pain or any kind of pain, skin irritations, rashes, uh, this is, says IBS, that's irritable bowel syndrome. If you're having a lot of stomach or gut issues or just inflammation, meaning that you're real puffy when you wake up and your joints and your skin feel tight, then you could probably really use some refreshment on, you know, what does that, what, what, is a healthy goal for me? What is a healthy ingredient for me? And when I eat this, I feel this way. Tracking that can be very helpful. So I am signed up for this free five-day challenge of how to learn to read the labels because I'm like y'all, I'm still learning and growing every day on this journey. And so that starts next week and it's completely free. I'm not affiliated at all, but I think it's a great resource to get started and kind of do a second step. You've, you've come to this class, so a second step might be to join this free five-day challenge. And it's going to email you um, just kind of, you know, here are some nuggets that you need to learn about food labels. So greenwashing is so important. I wanted to mention it again because oftentimes we look at a label and literally it might be green and it might have nature scenes and it's done in marketing to make us feel like we're choosing a healthier, cleaner product. One example of this is Mrs. Myers. So when I was first on my journey to having a cleaner, greener, healthier life, I thought that Mrs. Myers was a great product to swap to. 
And I noticed that I still didn't feel great when I was using those products in my house. I have, you know, some sensitivity to chemicals. And so um, I would still get a headache. I still wouldn't feel great. I still have some respiratory issues. And so I decided to do some more research and realize through the Environmental Working Group, they have an app and a website that are free. They help you identify products that may not be, you know, healthy versions of the product you want. And I learned that Mrs. Myers is one of those companies that greenwash their products. And so they're not actually a cleaner, greener, safer product. And I mentioned before in our first presentations that you're, that to me, even more concerning because not only are you thinking that you're using a safer product than the conventional ones that you can grab at the grocery store, you're also paying more for it too. And so I think that's so important for you to understand what it is, how you spot it and what you can do to actually avoid grain washed products. So this is the website that I mentioned. You can go in and type in a product and you can actually check your product to make sure that it is a greener, cleaner product. So even though I'm here talking to you about this today, I had to do the same thing because I just switched shampoos. I bought it at a local health food store. It said that it was great. I looked at all of the ingredient list uh, and, you know, the labeling on there it looked like a great product and I started using it and I checked it because I wanted to see if this was a product that I wanted to recommend to y'all because it is a little bit cheaper than some of the others that I'm going to suggest to you today. And it had an EWG rating of a four. So that's not terrible, but it's not great. And I noticed that I was still having some issues with, you know, my shampoo not working well and just didn't feel great after using it because I'm, I'm pretty sensitive to chemicals. Um, and knowing that it has a four, I know now that that's, that's probably not a product that I'm going to choose to purchase again. And so I have it out on my counter to um, responsibly uh, kind of declutter that because it's not worth it to me to use that product. So that's something that you can start to do as you replace your products. You don't have to go in and clean everything out and throw everything away. But as you start to run out of your shampoo or your soap or your deodorant, then the next time you go to the store or you place an order, you can just pick the cleaner, greener product. So this is the, you know, rethinking your, uh, your needs in terms of what you buy, what you recycle, what you replace. So this is just another good slide to remind you of how you can just use what you have, borrow, swap, thrift, make or buy, um, try to reuse, regift, resell, return products. So not only are you going to be making cleaner, greener, healthier choices, you also are going to really see this impact how you, you know, declutter, how you minimize, um, it's going to impact your budget for the better because you really do start to save money and realize that you maybe don't need that new product or that new thing. Um, so hopefully that's a good reminder for y'all. Oh, Monica, thank you for sharing that. Yes, if y'all have products that y'all want to recommend, please feel free. You also want to avoid single use plastics. So not only is this gonna be healthier for your budget, but it's also gonna be healthier for you and the environment. So it really is a win-win situation. So using things like stainless steel straws, if you're concerned about your teeth, you can put um, a little silicon slip over the top of the straw so that you're not putting that metal in your mouth. That's always a concern for me. Uh, single use um, Ziploc bags can be replaced with silicone. You can use uh, reusable grocery sacks, reusable Tupperware that's glass, so you're not getting that plastic. Avoiding, you know, plastic bags, plastic containers is so important. Trying to buy food in bulk so that you're not buying a ton of reusable plastic um, or disposable plastic pieces, you can, you know, eliminate that with shopping in bulk. And also, you can help your budget. Having buy nothing groups or, you know, swap groups where, you know, if you need to borrow something or you need to trade something, you're not having to spend money. Again, this is really going to impact your budget, hopefully for the better. Making your household products can be something that is fun for you and the family. So making your own cleaners, there's tons of recipes online. Specifically, if you go to Pinterest, you can find a lot of good vinegar based, white vinegar based uh, household products reusing your mugs or your cups or your mason jars, um, reusing plastic containers or metal tins or different things that you have in your home. I don't know if y'all have the grandmother that 
you know, after she got the tub of butter, she used it to put her leftovers in. But I had a grandmother that did that. So there are ways that you can start to include this in your everyday life. And then using cloth napkins or kitchen towels instead of napkins or uh, paper towels can be really important. Y'all, the average American household I want y'all to put in the chat how much you think that the average American family spends in dollars on paper towels a year. I would love to see your guesses, or maybe you know. $200, $125. Any other guesses before I tell y'all $300? I'm sure this varies quite a bit depending on how many people are in your family. 150 to 250 per month, 300. Yeah, so I've seen a couple of different figures. So if y'all go to fact check this, you know, it may vary. But um, but Dana's the closest. I've seen anything from 600 to 800 dollars on paper towels alone. And, you know, paper towels are great. I love them. Our family goes through them really quickly. And we have not fully made the switch to cloth because we have young kids and, and those uh, cloth napkins and things. Are, it's just very time consuming right now in my life to, to wash those daily. So we're not perfect at this, but $600 to $800, that's a lot of paper towels. And so that's, a, you know, an environmental impact. And you have to think the paper towels are coated with chemicals. And so there's an exposure there too. Monica says, go to Sam's, you'll save a lot of money. Yes, absolutely. And Sam's has the kitchen grade um, white and blue towels that are used a lot of times in uh, commercial kitchens. And those are a great way to replace your paper towels too. So just some thoughts there. If that was a shock to you, it was a shock to me. <laughs> Some product swaps, this is a checklist that you can use, um, just a place to start because there are so many more products than just what we're covering today. But this is where you can start to replace the things that you're using on a daily basis. It's estimated that you, particularly women, um, because we tend to use more products than men when surveyed in these, these you know, research studies, is that we expose ourselves to about 300 chemicals before breakfast because of all of the things that we're using in the morning to get ready. And so 300, also a big shock to me because I don't use a lot of products, don't have a lot of makeup. Uh, or other products that I use in the morning, but can you imagine if you're exposing your body to 300 chemicals before you've even had breakfast? That's the average American uh, story right now. So you can use this as a checklist and we're gonna go through this, the products. Most of the brands, I've got a slide at the very end that links to all of the companies I'm recommending. Beauty Counter is actually an EWG verified company, meaning that they've met the Environmental Working Group's highest standard for um, the chemicals and the processes they use to make their products. So when in doubt, Beauty Counter, Young Living, um, and a handful of others are going to be the products that I would say start there, see if you can replace your conventional product from one of their companies, um, and if not, then keep doing your research because there's a ton of available information out there. So shampoo and conditioner, I would definitely recommend Beauty Counters. Um, they have a, a new formula and they have a new look to their product. So when you go on their site, it's going to be in a light blue pump bottle, um, but it's the same great brand and comes highly recommended. I have used it and enjoy it. And that's what I'm going to have to replace my product with right now. Soap and shower gel. I really like Young Living's Morning Start. They have a couple of other fragrances that you can use, um, but that's my favorite. My favorite hand soap is actually the Thieves brand by Young Living. Uh, it's a great antimicrobial, and it has actually been tested at the governmental level to ensure that they say that it kills 99% of germs, and it truly does. So that has been a verified product. It wasn't for many years. Um, but it now has been verified by an independent lab and the governmental agency that actually oversees that. You also can have soap. So we have the local left-hand soap company. I know they were in Tuscaloosa for many, many years, and now they've moved to Birmingham to expand their company. Uh, but you can get their soap at Mana Grocery here in Tuscaloosa. And Mana has a lot of great natural products. They have some products that, um, you know, are not always the best options. Um, too, because again, you know, 
you've got to really think about supply and demand. And so you have to check it. You can't just assume that because it's at a health food store or grocery store that it's, you know, 100% the best product. But I'm sure it's better than what you're conventionally using when you're going to a big box grocery store or something like that. So Left Hand Tip Company is a good company to use. There's many other brands, but using bar soap is always really, really um, a better choice because of the ingredients that are in there. And they also have a very similar uh, pump soap that you can get. And so that's what I'm using right now because I'm out of my thieves hand soap. So they also have an option. You can even make your own soap. So I've done that for many years and especially hand soap, the pump soap is very easy to make. It's, you know, a couple of ingredients that you can get at a local health food store with some essential oils and it takes seconds and it's much cheaper than actually buying it yourself. You just have to get the containers and these containers are available on Amazon. So um, you could make your soap for a handful of dollars if you wanted to. Shaving cream and razors. So I'm not saying that the Flamingo and the Harry's razors are going to be um, the, the best in terms of health because there are plastic components and there's metal components, but it's hard to find a green, clean razor option. Um, but I will tell you that the Harry's and the Flamingo, which can both be bought at Target, the Harry's is actually available at CVS as well. Um, they're really good quality uh, in terms of, you know, the budget and um, the way that they're made and the fact that they are environmentally friendly because of the way the components are reused. And so they are great in terms of efficiency and they're good for the environment. And they're about as good as you can get in terms of being a clean product for you to use. This Dr. Bronner's Uncinted Organic Shaving Soap, you can also find a darker blue version in Peppermint. And this is a really, really old brand um, from the 1800s. It's been around for a really long time. And thankfully, it's still a really clean brand. And so it's one of the original soap companies and they have some amazing products. I'm gonna share a few more of their products, but it's a great one. You can buy it locally at our health food store. You also can buy it online. And it is going to be a different way to shave because it does not foam, but you really want to try to avoid products that foam because if they're having a foaming component, they've got chemicals and additives and preservatives that are not healthy for you. So this is going to be more of a liquid. It kind of looks like a honey color and a little bit less thick than a honey consistency. Um, and once you put some water with it and put it on your skin, it will have a very, very light, natural soapy foam. So great product there. And deodorant, I like Lume. Lume was created by an OBGYN and she created this because she noticed that her patients were having a lot of body odor and um, a lot of concern around, um, you know, the, the smells that are naturally going to occur um, because of sweat and whatnot. And so she's actually created a whole body deodorant that can go on, she says, on your pits, your feet, and your private parts. And so you can get the traditional stick deodorant, but then you also can get the cream. I have used both and they work very well. There's many different fragrance, fragrances that you can get. I'm always going to recommend that you get the unscented because then you know that you're not getting extra fragrance or chemicals from that. But there are many, many other. Uh, fragrances that are available in this deodorant and she's got many other products now so she's really expanding her company and I love that an MD made it because it was really trying to meet a need. You see that it says bacon soda free and aluminum free that's what you want to look for when you look for a deodorant. Um, if you get a natural deodorant a lot of times like Tom's of Maine or some of those others that you see those are better products to get than your conventional, you know, deodorant that has antiperspirant and aluminum in there. But the thing about it is, is if you put baking soda, which is in most natural deodorants, you usually end up getting a rash after a few days, especially considering that we're in a heat wave right now, because that baking soda is going to rub and irritate your skin, almost like sandpaper. So if you get a natural deodorant, do not get one with baking soda because you'll get a rash and you'll go back to your conventional deodorant and you'll say natural deodorant doesn't work. Well, I've learned that lesson the hard way. So avoid baking soda and remember that you're supposed to sweat. So there are people who get Botox under their arms, um, in their armpits um, and other places, but in their armpits to prevent sweating. 
And, and I have been tempted because when I was younger, that was a, a concern for me. Um, so I understand and anything that I am saying to try to avoid, I have done all of this. So this is a judgment-free zone. Um, but when you do that, when you block your ability to sweat, particularly in your armpits, or um, if you're doing other things to try to prevent sweating, it's really not healthy because our bodies are designed to sweat to get out toxins um, and to just regulate our temperature and things like that. And so you could be having some unknown side effects from doing that if you're trying to avoid sweating. So sweating is natural. I know it's not fun, but it's a part of our life. And it's certainly a part of our life in Alabama during a heat wave. So you want to sweat. If you're not sweating, think about why. Toothpaste, absolutely hands down my favorite toothpaste. I have tried almost every natural toothpaste that you can on the market. And um, I actually signed up for teeth whitening because I was having some discoloration. I love coffee. And um, I actually am thinking that I don't really need to start the teeth whitening process because I switched earlier this year from another natural toothpaste to this one. And I use the kids version because it is um, flavored with cake batter all natural ingredients. And this one is the adult version and it's mint and I prefer cake batter. Um, so it actually talks about why this is a better product and because of the way that the ingredients are put together. There's two natural ingredients, the xylitol and the hydroxyapatite. Those are two ingredients that are gonna really protect your teeth. This ingredient here was actually um, first used in Japan that we know of. And they are, you know, looking at the research to support that it remineralizes your teeth. So when you put this on, especially at night, when you brush, if you want to rinse your mouth out with water and then brush your teeth, then leave this toothpaste on because when it, it stays on the tooth itself, it actually can remineralize your teeth and can prevent some of those cavities and even heal small cavities. And I have seen that um, with me. Before I was using a toothpaste that had essential oils in it and I was having a lot of sensitivity, it was a cleaner, better toothpaste than like the Colgate brand that I was using before or whatever was on sale at the grocery store. Um, but that essential oil that was in the toothpaste was not helping the teeth sensitivity that I was having. Um, and it also can have some effects on your enamel. So that's another example of I made a healthy choice, but now I can make an even healthier choice because I'm on a different level of, of knowledge and awareness about what I need to be doing. So I have seen really good results for me and for my children on this. And we are currently a fluoride free family. Again, I know that's controversial. Um, you're not going to find anyone besides a biological dentist that's going to support that. So um, just know that you need to do what's best for your family and work with your dentist. Um, but most conventional dentists are going to tell you to do fluoride and to do those fluoride, um, you know, brush ons at the annual checkup and all of that. And you just have to do what's best for your family. Thankfully, my kids are older and we're past that point. So I don't have to make the hard choice, but they did use fluoride in their early years. But we are cavity free and very thankful uh, having made the switch. So dental floss, we um, have a lot of dental floss brands out there on the market, but they have artificial flavors. They have Teflon, which is that coating that makes it nonstick, and they have petroleum-based wax in those. This uh, brand, this dental floss is not going to have those harmful chemicals, and this is going to be a better product for you. I don't know about you, but this is another one that shocked me. I didn't think about my toothpaste being coated with a chemical, and I didn't think about um, my dental floss being coated with a chemical and how that was going to impact um, my health. That just was not an exposure that I was thinking of when uh, I started this journey. Mouthwash, again, Roswell is going to be one of the best brands. It's one of the top two brands. This one is my favorite just because of the comprehensive nature of what it offers. Um, but for all of these reasons, these are the things that are going to be in the product that are going to help protect you. So antibacterial, antifungal, and we know that our mouth health is so important to everything. Um, it's connected to our heart health. It's connected to our gut health. And so we want to make sure that we're taking really good care of our mouths. Hand sanitizer, back to Dr. Bronner's. I love the peppermint, uh, the blue. You also can get the lavender in terms of a, just a hand squirt spray. I have it in my bag right here. I never leave home without it. I also love the Thieves spray and the Thieves hand sanitizer. 
And you can buy all of these products, although Young Living and Beauty Counter are a direct sales MLM style company, you can still buy the products without having that type of membership. And so I made sure to include companies that I trust um, that are also accessible without having that direct sales MLM component to it. So all of these products are great. Um, just for convenience and um, because sometimes I have young kids that, you know, get things in their eyes. I use both the Thieves Waterless Hand Sanitizer and the Dr. Bronner's. But if I'm on the go and I'm with my kids, I use the Dr. Bronner's because you can just spray it and um, it doesn't burn when it gets in the eyes like these sometimes can. But if I'm really concerned that I've had an exposure to something, I use the Thieves. Makeup and beauty products. I use the Flawless in five right here with Beauty Counter. They have some great products. I actually was introduced to them and didn't realize that they were a green, clean company. Um, their products work just like any other brands that I would get that is a high performing brand. Young Living also has makeup products, um, but they're going to be less, uh, you know, of a traditional packaging. It's going to be more, um, you know, loose powders and loose eyeshadows and loose eyebrow pencils where the packaging for the beauty counter products are going to be in a traditional package. There's not going to be as big of a learning curve when you swap. When you run out of your mascara, you can just go get mascara from beauty counter. When you run out of your foundation or, you know, you run out of your, um, you know, lip gloss or something like that, you just simply go to beauty counter and you get the product that you need. And there's some great resources for color matching. Again, you can work with a consultant um, and do that direct sales aspect, but you also can just go to their website and purchase the products and they work great. Beauty Counter, like I said, is a EWG verified company and um, they're one of the best in the business in terms of clean products that actually work. Lotions, a lot of people like lotions. Lotions have a ton of chemicals and, um, you know, petroleum based products and so Beauty Counter has a great one. There is um, a grapefruit scent. They have other scents too. So just kind of take a look around their site. Sunscreens, I like beauty counters, a uh, counter sun, anything that has the zinc component that's really thick. Um, and it's that, you know, very thick white, um, you know, very uh, kind of covering. Um, it's going to have a little bit of a greasy tint to it because it is a zinc oxide, but that's going to be a little bit better for your skin and more protective. Um, so it's one of my favorite ones. Um, there are a couple of other brands if you go to EWG that you can even get at CVS or Target um, that have some great reviews and that have more SPF than 30, which many of us would need more than 30. Um, but those are some places to start for sunscreen products. I like Lavaderm and Lavender Essential Oil from Young Living. You want to make sure anytime you use an essential oil that you're using one uh, that is a medical grade essential oil, not one that you just kind of pick up at a big box store. And both of these products are really, really helpful and clean products to help if you get too much sun. So um, there's some other great products if you're really burned. So you check out our sun safety, uh, you know, presentation. We've got some great products there, but they're not the cleanest. But these actually work and are clean. Skincare, again, Beauty Counter or Young Living are going to be my go-tos. Uh, skincare is done in such a phenomenal way at Beauty Counter because there's a ton of different products and lines, including one specifically for men. Um, so you're definitely going to have more choice in terms of the variety of skincare options with Beauty Counter. Feminine hygiene is so important, um, especially for women who are still experiencing a menstrual cycle. You want to make sure that you're using organic tampons or pads. And so the Honey Pot Company is going to be a really good brand. It's going to be chlorine and pesticide and fragrance and, um, you know, non-GMO, non-organic, you know, it's going to, you're going to have a really good product there. Um, because cotton can get so toxic because of the pesticides and the way that it's treated, the way that it's bleached, you want to make sure that you're not exposing yourself for long periods of time to those kind of products. And you are when you're using tampons or pads. Um, you also can use things like menstrual cups or period panties. And you want to make sure, again, that when you're using cotton, which is going to be more breathable, that's going to be the better option, that you're picking an organic um, brand so that you're not getting overly exposed to those pesticides or chemicals or how those are treated. And the Honey Pot is available at Target. Bath and Beauty. 
Uh, again, I've mentioned essential oils, magnesium, salt baths, Epsom salt soaks are really helpful when you're detoxing or you're wanting to support your skin or get more magnesium in your body, um, which can really help with stress. Um, you've got things like nail polish and nail polish remover, which are going to be more of the toxic products that you're probably not really thinking about. Um, those are things that you want to be concerned about in terms of you know, making sure that you're swapping. Uh, these are some of the chemicals that you can see when you're actually using conventional products. And, and I love a good manicure. So um, sometimes you make the hard choice of, of getting those um, but you wanna make sure that you're picking a better brand, things like the piggy paint, especially for kids, if they're chewing on their nails and they've got polish on, that's gonna be more of an exposure. So um, looking for a nail polish remover, this is a good brand. This is actually a screenshot from the EWG app. And you see that it says low hazard and it's got a one. So the EWG app uses a red light, green light system. So green is good, yellow is kind of a caution. Um, so it's going to be those mid-range numbers, like the number four shampoo that I have. And then red's going to be closer to that like eight or nine range where it's not a good score. And so when you look at that, you also want to look at, is it a low hazard? What's the number? But also the data availability. So it might have a good score number, but the, there may not be a lot of data availability. So they don't really know what's in the ingredients because they haven't had to report those because our laws have not been changed since the 1930s um, in terms of reporting for beauty products. And so you wanna make sure that the data availability is at least fair and that the number is good because if this is poor or limited, then you, you can't really trust that that number is super accurate. So try to avoid perfumes and colognes. There's so many people who are sensitive to those. Things like, um, you know, aerosolized sprays, uh, you know, say no to Febreze, say no to, you know, Glade plugins and Scentsies and um, the, you know, little, uh, you know, fragrance holders in your car. Those are things that you really, really want to avoid. Laundry supplies, my very favorite brand, and I have tried every laundry brand out there is Drops. They also make a detergent for your dishwasher, which works phenomenally. Um, so our laundry, you have stain and odor detergents. It gets the stains out. It works amazingly well. It works better than the original Tide Pods, in my opinion. You also have Active Wash, which has a scent to it, and it's very, very clean scent. It's not overpowering, and it's also not toxic. And they actually come in the little pod packets. So Many of the natural detergents do not, and I love the convenience of this. Because my kids can help me with the laundry, you want to avoid fabric softener and dryer sheets. So instead of using dryer sheets, switch to the um, dryer balls. They work really, really well. And I have never needed a fabric softener, but you can use something like um, white vinegar, and that can really help you if you do need to make sure that clothes are a little softer. You also can really help the environment by using a drying rack. It also helps your budget because you're not using the dryer and it will help preserve your clothes for longer. I got mine at Amazon, but you can get these at Target and they work great. For dishwasher, this is the dishwasher detergent pod from Drops. Again, you can buy this online. They ship it to your house. You can do a subscription, which is easy to cancel. Um, we get a subscription, uh, a box or two, and we have seven people in our family with five children under the age of 15. And um, we get a subscription every four months and it works great. So um, my 12 year old is actually responsible for doing the dishes and we ran out because they had done some extra loads and we ran out a few days before our shipment came. So we had to get a better cleaner option, um, you know, than a conventional product at the local grocery store. And um, they look very similar. And my son said, what happened to our drops detergent pods? Because they go into this clear container. So he didn't know it was a different brand. He's like, they're not working like they that they were doing last week. And I said, well, bud, that's not the same. We had to you know, get a replacement at the grocery store until our order comes in. He's like, oh, well, I'll be glad when they come in because our dishes didn't get us clean and they don't smell like they should smell. And so anyway, I just thought that was neat that a 12 year old, um, you know, little boy decided that the drops really did work better and they do. Household cleaning products, uh, Thieves, Branch Basics and Norwex are gonna be great products for you to use. And I've got those linked. 
they have every kind of cleaning product that you could ever use in terms of a cleaner. And then Norwex has a lot of great um, actual cleaning tools to use. Thieves and Branch Basics, Thieves is Young Living, they do too, but Norwex is gonna have more of the products you need. You also wanna think about the mattress and the bedding that you're sleeping on, making sure that you have organic sheets and non-toxic mattresses. And uh, this brand here, it's SAA TVA. That's one of the top 10 organic mattresses that's not gonna off gas. You wanna try to avoid fragrance and scents like I mentioned in your home, the candles, the air fresheners, the plugins, the scentsies, the wax candle melts, the fabric sprays, all of that sort of thing. You also wanna get low or no VOC paint so that you don't have that paint smell in your home because that's going to be off gassing chemicals um, that can actually off gas for up to a year after you paint your home and you wouldn't necessarily know it. Filtered water is so important. This Hydro Flask is my favorite. Um, it's one of the better brands. It works great. Um, I always have it or something similar with me. You want to filter your water if you can. If you can't afford an entire water filtration system like I cannot for my house, um, or a, you know, a Berkey that actually filters your water, then you can get something as simple as a picture or uh, a picture of water that would filter your you know, water for you, or you could get one for your refrigerator. So lots of different options there, but you just wanna make sure that you're drinking a lot of water. Lemon water is really great to help um, detoxify. So if you're having digestive issues or having a lot of chemical exposures, lemon water can be really powerful and impactful. For kitchens, you want to swap things like Teflon or nonstick pans to uh, a stainless steel option. Uh, Teflon can really, really be toxic when it gets too heated. Glass over plastic, the Celtic sea salt brand that I use has 66 trace minerals. Making popcorn on your stove instead of in the microwave. Switching out to microfiber rags instead of paper towels. This shows some all-purpose cleaners and vinegars and things that you can get at Grove Collective that you can make your own. And then there's some Swedish just cloths that really do help the environment, but also uh, it's, it's not fully going to cloth, but they are reusable up to a certain number of washes. And um, that might be a better alternative if you can't go fully green with the washable rags. There's so many other swaps that you can do in the kitchen too. This is just kind of your starter pack. You also want to think about kids, you know, not wearing your shoes inside, especially if you have kids under age five, because under age five, they spend most of their day on the floor. Um, so, you know, making sure the rugs, the blankets, the things that they can reach um, and that there's no shoes bringing in outside pesticides and chemicals on the shoe is really, really helpful for them. Carpets, blankets, pacifiers, pajamas, clothing, the laundry detergent, formula, plastic bottles. You don't ever want to heat a plastic baby bottle. Um, plastic food containers, same thing. Teethers and toys, those are all important sources of toxin exposure for kids. And so you want to make sure that you pick the greenest, cleanest organic option that you can and just do your best because there's a ton of kid products that you just, you know, you have to make choices with that because of your, your budget and for your, your sanity. These are the product links that I mentioned. So beauty counter, drops, Lume deodorant, Norwex, Roswell, Wake Up and Read the Labels on Instagram, and then Young Living. And Ashley will be sharing the presentation out with you today. So um, if you're not able to get all of this information, no worries. We will definitely share this. I shared these accounts last time, but these are going to be the Think Dirty and the EWG apps and SIFT. Those are going to help you vet your products and your food sources. And then two other Instagram accounts that you can follow that really helped me get started on my journey. They're not exclusive to um, clean green products, but they are all about a healthy, holistic lifestyle. And these are some hashtags that you can follow. And what I always like to share is start where you are, use what you have and do what you can. Don't let this overwhelm you because there are so many different choices that you can make. Um, you have a ton of decision fatigue when you go to look at a new product or to make a life change. And we want this to be inspiring and encouraging and not um, something that feels like a burden. So just the next time you run out of a product, go and see what product you can replace it with that is a greener, cleaner option. So we would love for you to follow us on all of our social media channels. 
We have a great team with Carolyn, who's on the call today, Ashley and Miranda. They are the Wellness Work Life office and they do a phenomenal job. So please check us out there. And I will be happy to take any questions. We are at our time, so if you need to log off, that's completely fine, but I will stay on for questions. And if you have feedback, please let us have that feedback too. We would love to hear from you. Thank you all so much for the kind comments in the chat. If you all have any products or questions or things that you wish I had covered today, please let me know that too. This is one of our newer presentations and so we would love to continue to update it for y'all. Absolutely, Monica, I sure will. I will check out your website. Perfect, Maluka. <laughs> Maluka is a, is a brand, but also Maluka is a great essential oil. So that's a great skin essential oil too. I don't see any questions that if y'all have them, please feel free to put them in the chat. All right, well, seeing none, thank y'all so much for joining us for Clean Living Lifestyle Part 2. We will continue to update these presentations and bring you even more products for y'all to consider. And uh, we hope that you are excited about your wellness journey and that you continue to just make one small change, one small step. Uh, if y'all have any questions or feedback after the presentation, my email is here, abby.horton at ua.edu. We would love for you to check out our resources on the wellness.ua.edu site, where the first part one is archived for your viewing. And if you are interested in health and life coaching, please feel free to send me an email. Thank you so much.